In this video, I will be sharing with you some information on the meaning of adenoid cystic carcinoma. If you need information on the causes of adenoid cystic carcinoma, how to treat adenoid cystic carcinoma, or the symptoms of adenoid cystic carcinoma, please check out the videos in our channel. So, let's get started. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is a rare and unique form of cancer that is known to be unpredictable in nature, with a typical growth pattern of being slow and gradual, but over time can be progressive, insidious and relentless. There are some general tendencies, such as the propensity for it to spread into surrounding nerve tissue or metastasize to other areas of the body, yet each patient can experience their own diverse patterns and issues. Adenoid cystic carcinoma occurs most commonly in the oral cavity with 58% of the primary tumors beginning in that area, but it can actually occur in as many as 38 different organs in the body. It is commonly considered to be a salivary gland tumor, and grouped with other oral cancers in statistical studies since it occurs predominantly in that area. The oral area includes the major and minor salivary glands roof of the mouth, floor of mouth, gums, tongue, pharynx, and lips. Though it is often considered to be a salivary gland tumor, adenoid cystic carcinoma actually occurs in the broader grouping of all types of secretory glands, including tear glands, sweat glands, mucus and excretory glands. Besides the oral cavity, adenoid cystic carcinoma also occurs in the nose, nasal cavity, sinus, larynx, trachea, esophagus, ears, lungs, bronchus, brain, skin, lacrimal gland, breast, Bartholin's gland, vulva, cervix, and others. Upon initial diagnosis it is most often a single tumor that is located within a primary organ, and in about 5% to 10% of the cases can include spread into lymph nodes. In a limited number of cases it may have already spread into adjoining areas through nerve invasion or metastasized to the lungs, liver or bone as well. This takes place most often when it has been misdiagnosed for years. The first sign may be a lump inside your mouth under your tongue or inside your cheek. These lumps usually grow slowly and don't hurt. You might have some trouble swallowing, or your voice might sound hoarse. This type of cancer can spread along nerves, so you might have some pain or numbness in your face. If you notice any of these symptoms, see your doctor. If your doctor thinks you might have adenoid cystic carcinoma, the first step is often a biopsy. She'll take a small sample of the tumor, either after making a small cut or with a needle. A pathologist, a doctor who specializes in the study of diseases, will study the sample to look for signs of cancer. These kinds of tumors can take different forms. They can be solid or round, and hollow like a tube, or cribriform, which means they have holes in them like Swiss cheese. The solid tumors usually grow faster. Your doctor might want to find out the size and location of a tumor or look for signs the cancer has spread. You might have one of these tests. Magnetic resonance imaging scan involves the use of powerful magnets and radio waves to make detailed images. Computerized tomography, also known as the CT scan, can be used to take several X-rays from different angles, and then put together to show more information. Positron emission tomography, or PET scan, involves the use of radiation to make three-dimensional color images. The most common treatment protocol and gold standard for treating initial adenoid cystic carcinoma tumors is surgical resection with follow-up radiation. In a fairly large number of cases these two standard treatments do stop the cancer, and the patient has no recurrence in their lifetime. After the surgical removal of a tumor, the tumor sample is reviewed in the lab by a pathologist, and they report back that negative or clean margins were achieved, meaning all of the observable cancer was removed. If residual cancer is still in the surgical area, the pathologist will report positive margins. 
in learning to understand medical terms, this is one case when positive is bad and negative is good. Follow-up radiation treatment for any residual tumor left in the surgical area is the most common recommendation for treatment, with some oncologists recommending follow-up radiation even with clean margins due to the tendency of adenoid cystic carcinoma for invisible, microscopic spread. Because of the of high number of initial cases in the head and neck region, some patients have tumors that are not able to be surgically removed without causing major damage to critical areas, and radiation treatment is the only alternative and recommended choice for treating these tumors. Post-surgery radiation is always a very important treatment to consider, and it is recommended to research the options and gather input from physicians who are familiar with adenoid cystic carcinoma. In the last 10 years a variety of new, more precise, targeted, computer-driven radiation systems have become available and are relatively widely available. Treatment choices and decisions for both primary and metastatic tumors can be varied and complex when taking into account the tumor size, location, number of tumors, adjoining critical organs, infiltration, recommendations from physicians, available treatment centers, financial and insurance resources, and the knowledge and comfort level for the patient. For years some patients have tried a large variety of chemo or targeted drug treatments by themselves or as part of clinical trials, but no single chemo or drug combination has shown itself to be effective for more than a few patients. Like most cancer patients many adenoid cystic carcinoma patients also pursue a variety of complementary and alternative medicine. CAM, protocols as part of their treatment plan, and have reported various positive benefits. Adenoid cystic carcinoma patients generally share a long list of a variety of common side effects that they have experienced both short-term and long-term. Surgery and radiation to the head and neck area can have a wide variety of issues caused by the removal and treatment of tissue in the oral cavity and surrounding areas which can include chronic pain, dental issues and damage within the mouth and changes in facial appearance. Radiation side effects can affect many normal body functions causing issues such as dry mouth, nausea, hearing loss, tight jaw opening, speech impediment, and reduced eyesight. Besides the side effects from the initial surgery and radiation, the palliative treatments for managing those side effects can produce a second level of side effects as well. One example is brain swelling from radiation treatment in the head and neck area can cause nausea, which is normally treated with high-dose steroids. But the long-term side effects from the steroids can lead to connective tissue damage and premature cataracts. For more information on this type of cancer and all other cancer types, please visit www.ecancertips.com. Thanks for watching.